<laughs> All right. Um, next speaker is uh, Heather Fisher from Arizona State. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather. I'm from Arizona State. I'm a postdoc there. I'm also uh, the president of Crowd Informatics, which is a citizen science development and evaluation company. Um, and I've been working in Denali National Park for quite a few years now. Um, so I'm going to talk about a citizen science program that we had volunteers record uh, wildlife data, where they saw wildlife and when they saw wildlife in the park. Um, so just to orient yourselves, Denali is in central Alaska. It's a six million acre park. Um, we're going to focus on the park road area, which is where you see the visitor center markings and things on the map. It's kind of the northern edge of the park. That's where you see most of the wildlife. Denali, of course, is known for having the tallest peak in North America. You guys probably collected those maps that they had out there yesterday and the day before. Um, so this is Denali, 20,320 feet. Um, so most people go to the park to see the amazing views of the mountain, but also to see the wildlife. Uh, so we had folks use the Map of Life app, which is an app based out of Yale University. You can download it right now if you want and use it here and record what plants, animals, mammals, whatever you're seeing, you can record that. Um, so when people would get to the park, they would download the app, and the app actually works offline in Denali. That was one of the things we were testing for the folks at Yale that created the app was actually the offline capabilities. You can use it offline in the park. When you're riding the buses, going camping and hiking, you can record wildlife with it. You just need to know what animal you are looking at. And then once, come on, there we go. Um, so then once you know what animal you're looking at, you can actually press the record button. You see a little map of where you're at and where the animal is. So the visitors actually get to interact with and the users get to interact with that map. And then it actually collects that data and then we can use that. The wildlife biologists and the park social scientists have been using that data. You as the user can actually go look at your own wildlife maps as well and see what animals you saw on the website or in the app too. So, the park was really excited about a citizen science program, uh, but they were very cautious and weary of the data quality that usually comes with citizen science, unfortunately. Um, so the park biologists were interested in using the data for some of their species distribution modeling that they do, and I'll have an example of that in a second. And then the park social scientists were interested in using the data to look at wildlife and visitor interactions to see um, if where they need to maybe put more bear safety information. So I'm going to show some examples of the data that was collected from the first summer we launched program in 2016 um, of some of the bear data. So these are grizzly bears. These are very large, five, six, seven hundred pound uh, brown bears in Alaska. There's one sleeping on the road there. Um, so the top data set, the green, that's going along the park road in Denali. It's a 92 mile dirt road. You have to go on that road if you want to see the park. The only other way to see the park is to hike, backcountry hike, hundreds of miles in there. So you got to take the road if you want to see anything. Um, the top data set's the citizen science data, that's the green. The bottom data set is an authoritative data set that the park has uh, park biologists and interns ride the buses and record on like a Trimble device, a Juno, uh, where they see wildlife when they're on the buses. Um, so they've been using that data set for quite a while, but it costs money. They have to pay the interns and it takes time. And so they're hoping that the map of life data set can replace or enhance so they can use it as a hybrid to have everyday visitors out there collecting, collecting data. So one of the biggest challenges for me was convincing them that data is good enough. Um, so the map of life data, the thicker the line shows you more, more, more bears were seen and recorded. Um, same thing with the authoritative data set from the park. So you see that there's kind of thicker areas, more bears occurrences in the similar places in both data sets. And so I approved it statistically and with maps like this visually with presentations with Park Service that the data sets are comparable. They're not, the visitors aren't creating horrible observations. They're actually doing a pretty good job of ident correctly identifying wildlife especially with bears, like the big charismatic megafauna like bears and moose and things like that. They're pretty good at identifying those things. You should be able to tell the difference between a bear and a moose, right? So the park biologists, um, they haven't quite used this data yet and they're a little weary still, but uh, what, they're, what I've been showing them is some different things they already do with the data, which is species distribution modeling. So these aren't the prettiest of maps that you get out of species distribution modeling, but basically it shows you uh, with the known 
points that you have of, of an animal, of a plant or whatever it might be, um, where you might likely find it elsewhere outside of your actual data set. And so the warmer colors, those are areas that you're probably going to find a bear, right? Um, so this is an example I was showing the park biologists, and hopefully they will adopt the data set after a few years that we collect it, because they like to see things over time. So we have data coming in from this summer, and hopefully next summer, the next few summers, we'll eventually convince them to start reporting in their, in their annual reports with the citizen science data. Um, the park's social scientists were much easier to convince. Uh, Rose Keller, who's one of the co-authors on this and who we're actively writing a paper with, um, She's really interested in looking at bear safety and whether or not we can use the citizen science data to help inform the visitors about, yes, the bears are out there and they're not always just nicely sitting right outside of your bus. Um, so you have to be careful around the bears. And so we're looking at um, using these maps to publish on the park's website or posting up at some of the rest stops and things. So this one is um, kind, of a, kind of the preliminary the pilot map uh, that we were looking at in looking at the different rest stops and different areas that people normally spend time off the bus. Uh, people also go hiking everywhere. And then where we had a percentage of bear sightings from, this is just from the one summer, 2016. So the darker green, that's where there was more bear sightings. About 30% of the bear sightings happened within a, uh, two kilometers of one of those rest stops. And so we're hoping to use some of the citizen science data to inform not only the park staff about where they may, maybe need to be concentrating their bear safety efforts and some of their signage and some of the rangers at these rest stops, but also maybe posting this map on the website um, to inform the visitors like, yes, you could run into a bear when you're out there. So quick takeaway. Um, so the volunteers are doing a great job of collecting data. They can collect quality data. They also get a chance to interact with the maps that they're making. So they can, on the app, go look at the different observations they have made. And also um, online as well, there's an interactive map. Um, what they can't do right now is they cannot look at other people's observations yet. Uh, there's some issues with uh, Denali National Park, Map of Life, I've also been working with parks in South America and Costa Rica, that uh, endangered species and poachers, they don't, they don't want the data public accessible in real time. And so we've had many long discussions um, over Skype about this between Denali and, and Map of Life and myself about should we temporarily or spatially aggregate the data so the public can see other people's observations, but maybe they're like two weeks old or something. So we're working on that. Uh, hopefully it will happen. Uh, the park biologists, they're almost convinced to start using the citizen science data, uh, but the park social scientists are pretty much on board and think it's great that people will react to seeing uh, safety information and maps if they know that the public collected the data. They'll be more receptive maybe to that if they know it was from a citizen science program. So, thank you, merci. Great.